We realize this is an excruciating time for the families of those on board. No words can describe the pain that must be going through. Our thoughts and our prayers are with them. I have been appraised of the ongoing search operation round the clock. At the beginning of the operation, I ordered the search area to be broadened. I instructed the Malaysian authorities to share all relevant information freely and transparently with a wider investigation team. And I requested that our friends and our allies join the operation. As of today, 14 countries, 43 ships, and 58 aircrafts are involved in the search. I wish to thank all the governments for the help at such a crucial time. Since day one, the Malaysian authorities have worked hand in hand with our international partners including neighboring countries, the aviation authorities, and a multinational search force, many of whom have been here on the ground since Sunday. We have shared information in real time with authorities who have the necessary experience to interpret the data. We have been working non-stop to assist the investigation and we have put our national security second to the search for the missing plane. It is widely understood that this has been a situation without precedent. We have conducted search operation over land in the South China Sea, the Straits of Malacca, the Andaman Sea, and the Indian Ocean. At every stage, we acted on the basis of verified information, and we followed every credible lead. Sometimes these leads have led nowhere. There has been intense speculation. We understand the desperate need for information on behalf of the families and those watching around the world. But we have a responsibility to the investigation and the families to only release information that has been corroborated and our primary motivation has always been to find the pain. In the first phase of the search operation, we searched near MH370's last known position in the South China Sea. At the same time, it was brought to our attention by the Royal Malaysian Air Force that based on their primary radar and aircraft, the identity of which could not be confirmed, made a turn back. The primary radar data showed the aircraft proceeding on the flight path which took it to an area north of the Straits of Malacca. Given this credible data, which was subsequently corroborated with the relevant international authorities, we expanded the area of search to include the Straits of Malacca and later to the Andaman Sea. Early this morning, 
I was briefed by the investigation team, which includes the FAA, NTSB, the AAIB, the Malaysian authorities, and the acting Minister of Transport on new information that sheds further light on what happened to MH370. Well, that was the press conference of Malaysian Prime Minister who was speaking to the media a week after that jetliner went missing. We have Arthur Khan now joining us from Kuala Lumpur with the very latest. Arthur, a week later, more questions than answers. The Prime Minister too yet saying they're investigating all possible uh, theories at this point. Hijack not ruled out, but not ruled in either. Well, that's right. You see, uh, in the update which has come, one thing has been established, Ruchika, that the flight path of this aircraft is now known. Uh, there were speculations earlier because the Malaysian Air Force uh, was of the view that an unidentified aircraft was seen taking a turnaround, but they could not confirm it, whether it was the same MH370 flight. Now there is a confirmation, so therefore this is a vital piece of information as far as uh, investigations uh, are concerned. Now what we know is that uh, uh, though the, you know, the, the sphere of investigation, the area of investigation has been extended uh, to different regions, in, including Andaman, uh, China Sea, uh, what, uh, what the Malaysian authorities are doing is that they are narrowing down their investigations and they are not even ruling out the involvement of the crew members of this aircraft. Some uh, 12 crew members are also being uh, looked into their background, their antecedents, and especially the pilot uh, uh, who was uh, in charge of this flight, uh, because there's some, uh, you know, suspicious activity which has emerged from the photographs which uh, he had posted on his Facebook, in which one could see the flight simulators in the background at his residence. So that is one uh, surprising thing. That one, uh, why would a pilot who has uh, of experience of flying extensively have a flight simulator at his residence. So these are the uh, factors which have now forced the authorities to even look into the antecedents and records of the crew members. Ruchika. Right. In the press conference, the Prime Minister also mentioned uh, that the missing jet's uh, last communication with the satellites that picked up the link uh, was in the northern corridor which could border Kazakhstan. Now that is baffling because uh, now it seems the search is only getting wider. Well, absolutely. You see, yesterday uh, the transport minister had not ruled out uh, hijack theory. Uh, he said he cannot commit that, he cannot say for sure what happened, but he's not ruling out uh, the hijacked angle. And especially this has emerged after, you see, uh, there was a data, the satellite images which were sent by the U.S. and they were interpreted and it was discovered that even after the transponders of the aircraft were switched off, now we have a confirmation that it could have been deliberate. Uh, the flight uh, was uh, carrying forward, it was taking the flight path for good. Uh, two hours, meaning that was it was in air, and uh, the accident theory is now, you know, in the backdrop. Uh, it goes, uh, it, it is relegated to the backdrop, and now the hijack theory becomes quite important, especially the location, uh, um, uh, the geography, and the flight path which this uh, aircraft took. Right, uh, and after I'll also point out another thing: the uh, the Prime Minister, Malaysian Prime Minister, there mentioned that MH370 was. Uh, uh, sending satellite data till about 8 11 on Sunday morning which means for about eight hours after it took off and that means seven hours after it was lost so to speak from uh, from the ATR so in, in that sense a lot really for the Malaysian authorities to explain how can an aircraft be airborne for seven hours without any communication how nothing was done perhaps and how there may have been uh, very glaring lapses on part of Malaysian uh, authorities well, that's right. You see, the Malaysian authorities are on the back foot on this account because this is an unprecedented situation, not just for them, but even across the world uh, uh, in terms of the search operations which are being carried out. And also, if you see, uh, uh, you know, the in investigations uh, concerned with the aviation. Now, what uh, there are very se several things which have baffled them, including, uh, you know, the suddenly uh, the transponders were off 
they they are unable to ascertain whether it was due to deliberate power disconnection or uh, it hap it happened out of an accident now what we know from our aviation experts is that this, there was something drastic which happened at around uh, 1 uh, uh, 21 past uh, 1 uh, am uh, that intervening night but what it was cannot be said with certainty so therefore uh, but the fact that the malaysian air force uh, 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 radars have uh, the primary radars have detected the movement suspicious movement of this aircraft and it took them a while to interpret uh, the movement there was no immediate monitoring uh, no information trickled down immediately uh, is makes things suspicious however uh, you know it can be discounted given the extent of uh, you know the the factors which are involved and the movement which was seen uh, uh, of the aircraft it certainly uh, there are several questions which the Malaysian authorities will have to answer. Well, this plane mystery has now uh, entered its second week. Certainly more questions than answers in Malaysian Prime Minister's press conference is uh, more likely to fuel uh, speculation about uh, the whereabouts of this plane, about the well-being of uh, the crew and passengers who were on board. The Prime Minister also emphasizing that they have, uh, in fact, turned their attention again to the crew who were on board that aircraft and also the passengers.